KFYO, good morning, 739. Tom Laura, Congressman Randy Nagabra on the line. Welcome to the program, Randy. Where are you today on the Hill? I am on the Hill today, about to head to Texas tomorrow, so that's a good thing. Okay. All right. I think that uh, this Iran deal is still front burner for a lot of people. Now, you know, when when... When we drew the line in the sand and we kept moving it and moving it and moving it and moving it, you know, about a year has passed with all this stuff. And, you know, there are a lot of interesting observations that, you know, I've just, just things I've seen assimilated that, you know, we'll throw out there maybe a little bit. But where are we at on this Iran deal? I mean, where is the real support for this thing? Because... You know, you have leadership of a country that, you know, says death to America and they fund and sponsor terrorism around the world and we're sitting there trying to cut a deal with people. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it, it, it doesn't, Tom. And, and you know, when I, the polling I've seen, and the American people don't think it makes a lot of sense, but... You know, I, it, this is just a kind of a continuation of this administration. Uh, they're uh, wanting to be everybody's friend, and uh, you know, and, and, and I think what they do is they show America is being weak, and particularly in this situation where really these sanctions have been pretty effective. Uh, the economy uh, in uh, Iran, and because a lot of these, particularly those countries in the Middle East. Uh, that oil is an important part of their economy, and that's how the government, you know, basically provides a lot of the, the services is uh, through the sale uh, of their oil. And uh, so you've got a, a pretty high unemployment in Iran, and so we really were negotiating, I believe, from a, a position of strength. Uh, but all of a sudden, this administration did a 180 and started giving away the farm. Now, I think the good news is, is that even on the Democratic side, is that uh, picking up some opposition over there, and Chuck Schumer came out uh, and said uh, he was going to be against the deal. I think he said that last week. The problem is, and I think we have to everybody, up here you have to learn to deal with reality, there are probably uh, enough votes in the House to pass the, uh, the disapproval resolution and probably enough votes possibly in the Senate to pass it. But then the president's going to veto that dissolution uh, a disapproval resolution, and I'm not sure there's enough votes in the Senate, and I'm not sure in the House either if there's two thirds in both those bodies. If there's not then enough to overturn the, the the disapproval resolution, you know, then the president wins, and so the White House is extremely busy right now, uh, working uh, the phones and uh, you know inviting people over to the White House, particularly uh, Democrats. Well, this is just one thing I need to say. People all over the country need to make their intentions and their feelings known to their senators and actually call in, uh, bombard their box and let them know what's happening. Because I think that the people that do not vote to override the veto in the Senate may have hell to pay come election time. Uh, I've got an interesting aspect I want to share with you, uh, just an observation about all this Iran stuff here coming up next. This is Lubbock's First News. Tom Collins and Laura Mack, Randy Nagabauer on the line. Randy, okay, just over the weekend, we had a uh, rally on the Texas Tech campus. There's about 20 students that are supporting, you know, this Iran deal that was put forth by, you know, the administration. Now, this is something that, that I just wanted to, to, to kind of share with you. Um, well, the administration and other world leaders. All right, right. But anyway, there were about 20 people that showed up at this rally at Texas Tech. Uh, Mohsen Fulati left Iran to come to the U.S. for the first time about a month ago, starting a Ph.D. program here. And he says that he feels a, a sense of responsibility to speak up in support of what he thinks will help Iranians. Now, this is an article that I'm getting these, these quotes from out of uh, Sunday's Avalanche Journal. It was an article written by uh, Sarah Rafike. I think that's how you spell her name, or pronounce it, Rafike. 
Anyway, Filati was among uh, 20 students who gathered, and and Filati says that everything in Iran is very unpredictable. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're going. The economy's up in the air. A lot of people were sitting there saying sanctions didn't work. Okay? I beg to differ, number one. Number two, they love America. They think that it's stable, and you know where you're going. So why in the world, if Fulati thinks that America is so great, why do we want to augment the power structure in Iran that is boosting the Ayatollah who says death to America? Doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it doesn't make any sense. And, you know, probably the Iranian people, I think, as we were talking earlier, and you said this in that article, these sanctions were working. It's causing a lot of uncertainty in there. And the way that you overthrow these regimes in those countries is not by the America going in and liberating those those uh, regimes, but by the people causing unrest there. And if you've got all of these people that are unemployed, uh, that they don't have uh, some of the essentials, uh, for their daily lives, they started getting getting restless. And the, the problem with, uh, you know, if this Iranian deal would and help the, the Iranian people, and that's the way the, the Iranian government is selling this, by the way, but basically uh, by lifting these sanctions, one, we're going to free up a lot of cash flow, which we know the Iranians are using to sponsor terrorist organizations uh, uh, globally, and secondly, bringing starting a nuclear a race in the Middle East is not really positive, both for the, that region, but but for uh, for the world. And uh, you but know, that isn't the problem uh, with the sanctions in Iran the fact that it's not being universally applied? Because we've had like China undercutting and things like that, so other people are kind of helping them out while we're dishing out sanctions. So that kind of makes it not work. Well, Laura, I hear you, and not everybody is playing in, in this, but basically a lot of the, the people that do have the ability to do business with Iran and, and, and benefit Iran, a lot of those countries are honoring the sanctions. Uh, and so, I mean, I don't know that you're going to get uh, everybody uh, to, to blockade uh, Iran, but we've gotten quite a few, and these sanctions, uh, regardless of what other people say, uh, my the, people, the briefings that I have, these sanctions have been working. It's causing some unrest in that country. Well, you know, obviously this person's been here a month, and they're already juxtaposing the stability of, you know, our country and their country. And I, I just, you know, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense when you sit here and you hear it from somebody firsthand who just came from that country. But anyway, um Got a question uh, coming up on the other side of the break. 755, Tom and Laura with Congressman Randy Nagabauer. Randy, okay, what's the story on the Patriot missiles coming out of Turkey? Well, the administration announced over the weekend that uh, they were bringing those back uh, kind of with two different stories. One is that they haven't had to use that missile defense system since those uh, units have been over there. And secondly, that they need upgrades and that they're... uh, uh, beefed up their military, their air support. I think they sent some additional F-15s or F-16s over there, and as well as they've got some drones. And so uh, that, that's kind of what we know at this particular point in time. So basically, they're saying it's like an upgrade, right? Well, they're saying that they're going to bring them back and upgrade them, and that these that uh, they they've not had to use those systems over there, and, and they feel like possibly you know having the additional uh, air support is more effective. Uh, uh, we'll wait and see. Okay. My guess is that uh, we'll, we'll have some uh, hearings and we'll learn a little bit more right. about what, what the administration's yeah. and position a, is. The statement says, if needed, the United States is prepared to return Patriot assets and personnel to Turkey within one week. So we right. yeah. could and, do that uh, if we needed to. So, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, all plays out. Okay, Randy, uh, 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 we got a we got a call for you. Seven seven zero five seven nine zero. Kent, you're on. What's up? Yeah, Mr. Nagabar, What I want to know is why that you, McCain, McConnell, and Boehner, and the rest of you voted for the health care program that's just killing me 
they raised my supplemental policy $276 a month because of it, and I'm on a fixed income. And every one of you told us that y'all was going to vote to be funded. The only one that had any guts to do anything about it was Ted Cruz, and he's been blasted out of the saddle on it. I'm pretty upset about it, sir, and I don't like it. Y'all told us that you're going to vote to defund it, and I want to know what's going on. Thank you. Okay, there you are, Randy. Well, you know, I don't want to it's more than two dozen times that I've voted to, to uh, you know, abolish Obamacare. And uh, there's a lot of discussion about using a process called reconciliation in the fall. Uh, the Senate and the House has to agree to that, uh, and I'm certainly uh, willing and able to vote against uh, uh, or, or vote for uh, a uh, resolution that would uh, defund Obamacare. But again, we'll, we'll just have to see how that will plays out. But uh, let me be clear, my voting record is very clear. I have voted a number of times to, uh, you know, defund and do away with Obamacare and put in a common sense uh, health care system for the American people. Hey, just, just a question. Um... You know, when the when the first time around when when we voted and and we voted to accept this, did and we've only got about thirty seconds. Was this vote made without a complete understanding of you know all the hidden bells and whistles that go along with this deal? Well, you you remember Hillary? I mean, not Hillary Clinton, but Nancy Pelosi said we had to pass this so we don't know what's in it. It was a huge a piece of legislation. It was put together in the dark of night. And the Democrats control the House and the Senate and the White House, and basically they jam that down the American people's throat. Yeah, I think what Ken's deal was, and we're, we're out of time, Randy, but I think what Ken's deal, Ken's deal was is we were just kind of, uh, you know, kind of blindsided, and I think he was saying we should have held our water rather than pass it, you know, first time. Hey, thanks for your call, man. I appreciate it. You bet. Take care.